Hey everybody, Billy Obenauer here, welcoming you to the first episode of Brightspace with Billy. This is a pretty exciting episode for me for a few reasons. One, it's the first time that I'm recording a video for my YouTube channel with my parrot Jelly in the office with me. So first time we're working together on one of these. But what that does mean is that you may hear her mimic a few things I say throughout the episode or potentially yell out her name or good morning or something else that she likes to say throughout the day. A second, first episode that I'm recording with a new microphone. So this should be the video on my channel with the best sound quality. Really excited to hear what people think about that. And then finally, uh, this is also the first episode that I'm recording for faculty. Usually I record lessons that are intended for students, but recently somebody brought a faculty need to my attention. So I decided to record a short video to kind of walk people through how I solve a problem that a lot of us have been dealing with. Okay, so the problem that we are going to be addressing today deals with the fact that students don't always read the syllabus for your class. Okay, and this is something that a lot of us deal with, and you may be wondering, why does this really matter? Well, one, from a faculty perspective, it shifts our time away from adding value. So instead of doing things like preparing better lessons, coming up with activities, building new projects, you're spending your time doing things like responding to emails about due dates, responding to emails about how grades are calculated and things of that nature. So the more that our students are engaged with the syllabus and understand how the class is going to work, the more time that we have to actually add value to learning and help students learn material as opposed to clarifying kind of administrative questions. All right, and then the second piece is for the students, they benefit from using the syllabus as well. Okay, because without using the syllabus, it's kind of like driving without a map. And I have a picture of a Hall of Justice toy here on the screen because this is actually the example I use when I explain to my students why the syllabus is important. And I tell them the story about when I was a little kid and I got a Hall of Justice toy for Christmas and I had been wanting this toy. I'm a, a huge DC Comics fan. I had been looking forward to this toy since I first saw a commercial for it and I got it for Christmas. I was so excited. Uh, but then my parents didn't want to use the instructions to put it together. So they spent hours trying to put this thing together that should have taken probably about 30 minutes. And I spent most of Christmas just watching, waiting to play with it rather than actually using it. And when our students don't engage with the syllabus, they kind of have a similar experience. Rather than moving forward and doing things in the class, they spend more time being concerned about how things are supposed to be done when the answers are really right in front of them. Right, so they might send an email and wait for a day to get a response to that email when they've had the answer available to them the entire time. And that's what I'm trying to teach them when I walk through this with them. All right, so the question now is, we know the problem that we're trying to address, that people don't read the syllabus, okay? How are we going to solve this problem? And what I use to start is a syllabus assignment. And some of you may be ready to close the video right now saying, hey, I've tried that, it doesn't work, but just give me give me a minute. If I haven't sold you in one minute, then close the, close the video, but just give me a minute to walk through this. I started with a syllabus assignment that didn't work as well. I started with a syllabus quiz. I signed it to my students, it counted for a grade. About a third of them would opt not to do this thing and just take a zero on it. Um, it was a take home quiz. But what I found was that the people who were opting not to do it were the people who needed to do it the most, right? So I had to figure out a way to make this work. And what I started doing was I started using a feature in Brightspace that allowed me to set conditions for access to future work. All right, so the syllabus assignment was no longer about whether or not you got an easy 100 in the grade book, but instead it was about whether or not you could access the rest of the class. Okay, so I'm gonna take you over to my Brightspace page and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this. All right, so we're on the landing page for my human resource management course here. Yeah. And I'm gonna to go to the content tab and I have my course broken down by book chapters. Okay, and we're here in the chapter one section and you see the first thing that I have here is the syllabus quiz. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on this and I just want to show you real quick what this kind of looks like, okay, as we go into the setup here. Basically, I just have 10 questions. It doesn't cover everything that's on my syllabus. What it does is it covers the things that I really want to make sure that my students take out of the syllabus. Okay, so there's a question on here about the Carnegie unit because I want them to understand how much work I expect them to do during the semester and where that's coming from. There's a question about technical support. There's a question about if you miss an assignment and so on and so forth. But I just have 10 questions in here and I expect them to be able to get 100 on this syllabus check-in because all the answers are in my syllabus. 
So I'm going to click back to manage quizzes here. And what I want to show you here is that this shows you a list of all the quizzes and that I call check-ins in my course. And you see there is a, a little thing here that looks almost kind of like a candle holder. Um, this icon basically means that there are conditions set that a student must meet in order to access an assignment. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my course content and I'm going to show you how we set those up. So we're going to jump ahead here to chapter five. We're going to take a look at chapter five. And if we scroll down, scroll down to my chapter five check in, you'll see that there are conditions that must be met for a student to access this. And the condition is that they have to receive a grade of 100 on the syllabus check in. Okay, so how do we set that up? I'm going to go up here to I have something called an interactive lecture. Okay, and I don't have conditions on this, but maybe I do want to have conditions on this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on here and you see release conditions. I'm going to go in and I'm going to browse and I already have receives equal to 100% on the syllabus check-in as an option. So I'm going to click check and I'm going to go ahead and attach that and I'm going to click update. And now you see that that condition has to be met in order for someone to complete the interactive lecture. Well, what if you don't have that condition already set up? Well, let's take a look at that situation. We're gonna go ahead to chapter six and we're gonna set up a new condition. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our interactive lecture for chapter six. We're gonna click on the dates there again. We see release conditions. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click create. I'm gonna do a condition type. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down to quizzes and you see here we have score on quiz. I'm going to select the quiz I want is the syllabus check-in. Score has got to be equal to a grade of 100. I'm going to create this condition and now you see we have this condition here it receives equal to 100% on the syllabus check-in. I'm going to click update and now that's applied. So we're all done. And the great thing about this is that when you copy content from one course to the next, as your semesters progress, these conditions stick with it. So you only have to do this once. You don't have to do it from semester to semester. That's why when we jumped from chapter to chapter here, you saw I already had these conditions set up. All right, so I hope this helped you in terms of understanding how you can use conditions to help guide your students and make sure that they potentially do work in the order that you want or that they access things like a syllabus assignment and complete them with an acceptable grade before they move forward in the course. All right, so thanks a lot everybody for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. This is Billy Obenauer. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Charlie.